In this tutorial, we're going to show the production pipeline we use at Spark Studio. Here you see an actress performing a part in the film. We're going to take this video and we're going to send it to a website called Radical that then uses artificial intelligence to give us an FBX file of her performance. We're then going to take that file and bring it into Blender and we're going to map it onto a character. Now, I could have used any of a number of scripts that Blender already has to map this file on. Not only did I want to learn about how to create my own script, I also wanted to have several features that Blender didn't currently have, such as being able to tune exactly how a transfer occurs on a bone-by-bone -bone basis, and also have no tie to the original FBX file when I was done with the transfer. So if you want to learn how I did this, buckle up and hold on, because here we go. So I'm going to go to Make Human and create a character that we're going to put our animation onto. For the source file of the animation, we went to a service called Radical that takes videos and converts them using AI into an FBX file. So after I've got my Make Human character in, I can import my FBX file and place it inside of Blender so I can transfer from the FBX to the Make Human character. Next we're going to download the script that I wrote that will transfer the animation onto our Make Human character. So you go to the GitHub page and you click on the zip file to download and then you click the download button to download the zip file. Then inside of Blender you go to Edit, Preferences, click on the zip file and you say install add-on. When it shows on the list you check the box to enable it and now you have a new add-on. Both of the rigs that you want to transfer from, this one has the animation, this is the rig that we're actually going to map to. So what we do is we click on this rig, we go to object mode, and the object for this is the source rig on the right, so we take the source rig name, and we go to pose mode, and we say source rig rig name and we put that in there. Then we click on the other rig and its object name is human. So I'm gonna just for ease of use I'm gonna select both rigs so when I go into pose mode I can select bones in either one. And now since I have a human bone selected I'm gonna select human put it in the destination rig name. Noticing I'm getting it from the object name tab, not the armature tab. So this is the source and armature object names. Then we're going to give it a bone mapping file and for this test we're going to give it a new file name and we'll call it um, radical to make human tutorial dot json since it's a json file. We say accept and now when we hit save if you delete these out and even the file name and you change these numbers to something else you can hit read oh it got rid of the file so we have to browse the file. <laughs> so let's go back to the tutorial hit accept and you read the file and it sets everything back. So it's it's in the file is every setting we have over here and if you hit save or read it'll um, save everything or read everything back. So if I add five new bones down here and I give them names like garbage, I hit read and it gets rid of all of them and puts it all back to the way it was. So to map our first bone we're gonna click new bone and if we select the source bones name, we can say get name. Now this is the root bone for the entire armature. So not only are we going to be setting the rotation of this bone, we'll use it to set positions so that as the character moves around, our character will move as well. So I click on the root bone of our character and I say get name from it and it auto populates. It knows that I've selected the target name and so it puts the name in wherever I want it to be. This name at the top can be uh, any name you want it to be uh, 
and that just changes the name in your display. So make the name easily readable if the name from the source bone uh, is poorly named or doesn't make sense. And the name that you put in here just shows up on the name here and doesn't do anything else in the script. So you can name it anything you want. If now we want to see what happens when we map this bone's position and rotation to this bone. So I can press the test button down here and you notice the character flips sideways and jumps to the top. Well, we don't really want it to do that. So if I hit rotate X, I can see that I'm having to rotate in the 90 to about, well, actually I'm only rotating about 77 degrees here. So what I do is I go to X and I say 77, I press enter. And now when I say test, he's about the right orientation, but he's not in the right um, position that I want him to be in. So there's a correction for position we can put in here. So we say GZ and it looks like we're going negative 0.7 in the Z, negative 0.7 in the Z. Now I hit test. Whoops, let's make it positive 0.7. I say test. I go GX and I'm going about negative 1 in the X. So now my characters are side by side. I'm going to make it more than 0.7. I'm going to make it uh, 0.9. Test. Okay, now he's more close to the floor. That's a little bit too low, so I'll drop it down. Test. Okay, that's about where we want him. So now as I move along, I can hit test, and the character is going to move exactly like the other character. So that's our first bone. Now we go to our next bone, create it, and we'll click on this one, which is his waist bone, and we will click on that bone and we will get its name. Click the next bone up, get its name, and then we click test on that and we see he's rotated in the wrong direction. So to correct it, We'll click on his bone, rotate Z, and go, okay, that's negative 90, negative 90 in the Z. So we go negative 90, and we say test. Nope, must be positive 90. Test. Yep. Oh, you know what? I'm modifying it in global. We want to do it in local axes. So now we say rotate Z and it's the wrong way. Rotate Y. Rotate X. Okay, so it is the Y that's messed up. So we go rotate Z. It is Okay, so this is going to be zero. Test and then rotate Y, we go negative 90 in the Y, test, and then rotate X, it's about negative 23 in the X, so we say negative 25, say, and we say test, there we go, he's about in the right position. So it's easiest to do this when we're in the T pose, if we say test all, it does everything. So it'll do all the bones that you have mapped so far. So if I hit save, that'll save our work so far. And we'll slowly work our way through the character. And we can map this bone to multiple bones so that it moves multiple bones. So that if there's more bones in one rig, we can, we can map it all out. So here I've sped up the video so you can watch me do basically all the way up the spine. And then we'll start working on the arms as soon as I finish this section. So now that I've made it to his neck, here we go on the arms. The, it's really important to keep this list in parent to children because the way the script works is it's, it takes this bone and this bone and sets its global position. If you were to do one of the arms out here and set, I'm sorry, it's global rotation. If you were to do one of the arms and then go back and do one of the parents later, 
it would move the arm because moving this bone moves all of its children. So you want to start from the parent bone and work toward the children. And if you do it backwards, the script doesn't work. And that's why this mo uh, note here says list must be ordered parent to child. So now I'm gonna do the first arm. So I select his arm. I select the new thing, the, the new bone I just created. I get the name, select the shoulder, get the name. And we're going to continue on down the arm, and then we'll do the other arm. So we'll start here, go all the way out to his hand, and go out to his other hand as well. So I'll speed it up again so you don't have to watch every piece of this. So earlier in the script, I actually led you a little bit of a stray. You saw me actually modify a bone and then change the degrees and do a bunch of work to figure out exactly how to set the bone so it's not so it matches the position I want it to be in. You don't actually need to do that. There's a button in there called Calc Correction that will calculate the correction for you and put the correct rotation for the bone in for you, and I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, so I finished the right arm. It gave me kind of an idea, and I needed to show you guys a few tricks. So we're going to go back to the T-Pose, and um, if I hit Test All, it puts my character into the T-Pose for everything I've done so far, so I'm following it. So when I'm going along, I'm going to start his left arm and I'm going to show you the left arm. So I click on this, I get the name, and if I click on his right shoulder, I get the name, his left shoulder, I get that, and so now I've made his left shoulder. So up to this point, I've been showing you how you can modify a bone and basically rotate it up and down and then you enter the values in for correction. But you can actually press the calc correction button and it will take and make it so that when you hit test all the bone doesn't move so it calculates the correct corrections for you so you can manually move a bone and get it to exactly where it matches the pose for the other target armature and then if you hit calc correction it'll automatically put in all the rotations for you so here what I'm trying to do is actually make the bones positioned so they're exactly like they are on the T-pose of the other one. Notice the T-pose for my one character is down about a 45 degree angle with the arms. But with the other, they're straight out. What we want to do is position those bones so that they're both straight out. And then we can use the calc corrections on each bone to basically make it so that they both have the same T-pose when you hit test all and the positions match. I can hear some of you saying, but you can do this other ways with other scripts in Blender. And I'll just say I'm an engineer, so since it's not invented here, I created my own way to do it. That's what engineers do. We make our own ways. So now, as I move my character along, I can strike a pose, say test all, and you can see everything is about in the right spot. So it looks good. So we just keep on going. We're going to go back to the beginning, hit test all, and we can go anywhere in the animation to see how our mapping's going. So if I hit test all, see I'm roughly in the same position. Obviously I haven't done his left for or forearm yet or any of his legs, but I'm just checking everything I've done so far to make sure it ma matches pretty closely to the import. I'm also going to mention that I probably spent a couple weeks trying to figure out how to globally position the rotation of a bone in Blender. That weren't easy. Uh, and if you want me to explain it someday, I can, but it's tough stuff. Okay, so now I'm noticing that his, um, um, his arm is a little close to his chest. So what you could do is you can click on his arm and you can hit select and it'll automatically move and what I've selected is the left arm too so when I hit the select button it takes whatever bone I have selected and selects it from the list and what I can do is I can rotate in the direction that I want to change it so I want to rotate it out a little bit so I'm 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 rotating at about negative 25 degrees so I can just keep my eye on it and go okay I'm rotating I by negative 25 and go okay so that's that's about negative 130 if I added it to that but I can also hit the calc correction button again and when I test it now his arm is in that position that I've just put it in so that moves his arm 
about the same angle every time and it's not as close to his chest. So the calc correction button, when I, calc when I click on it, will take his bone and look at the bone in the other armature and if you modify it, it'll modify it according to what you had before and then make a new correction to get it to where you have it now. Um, so that way you don't have to keep track of everything. You can just move the bone to, to where it matches the other one in all of the situations. And you can just start tracking and making sure that it's doing the right things you want it to do. So while you're watching me finish this, I just wanted to mention that I learned a whole heck of a lot about Python when I did this. Um, how to make a zip file and put all of the Python code into separate files and create an init file inside the Python. Uh, you can go through my code on GitHub if you want to see how I did it, but it was quite a learning experience. Okay, so I've mapped the head, all the arms, the legs, and pretty happy with the bone mapping file. Um, only took about 15 or 20 minutes here, so um, we've got all of our mapping done. So now what we want to do is we want to say, well, our animation, it's actually a pretty long animation. I don't know if I'm going to do the whole thing. Let's just go up to, say, frame 300. So we start at frame 0, we go up to frame 300, and we want to keyframe every 3 frames. That's a little tight. Maybe I'll make it every 5 frames. What you can do is if you go to a certain location, you can check this keyframe test button. And when you hit test all, it'll create a keyframe at that frame for all the bones. So then I say test all again. He's in the new position. And I get just the two keyframes at the two locations. So if you like, you can basically scrub through the timeline and just keyframe at the poses that you want to keyframe and not keyframe everything from the transfer. So you have a little more fine control over the transfer of how you do it. I don't necessarily want all of those, just these two. I want to keyframe every five frames for 300 frames straight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into pose mode here. I'm going to select all. And I actually have to only select this rig to get rid of the two keyframes I made. You can see that in pose mode, if I select all bones, over here I've got basically a ton of keyframes. I'm going to delete those two keyframes. And now I can hit Alt R and he's back to his normal location. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up the, the system console so we can watch the script work um, as we transfer our frames. So I might fast forward the video here, but I'm going to go ahead and transfer animation from source to destination. You go ahead and click this guy and you get a percentage we're at three percent and we'll fast forward and see what it looks like when we're done okay so we've finished transferring our animation and let's watch it run so we'll zoom out here start at frame zero and press play and see how it looks and also I wanted to mention that all the files that I created here and the JSON transfer files and everything I'm going to put in the examples folder on the GitHub page. So if you want to look at them, you can. Here's another character I did and you can see his feet twitch around. It's because I left some constraints on. Make sure you disable all constraints when you're using the script. I hope you've enjoyed watching.